What's up guys, welcome back to Title Gardens. If you saw my last video, you already know that my tank is finally put together and has started undergoing its cycling process. Now, me being quite new to this side of the hobby, I had no idea what cycling actually entailed, just that it had to be done and there was bacteria involved in one way, shape or form. In reality, knowing exactly what is happening in your tank chemically will make a world of a difference if you ever have to troubleshoot anything and will lead to a healthier tank in the long run. So I finally had to sit down and learn what the heck was going on inside of my tank. And for my fellow beginners out there, I'm gonna walk you through it too. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So before I go over the nitty gritty, we're, let's just do a quick overview of what the nitrogen cycle actually is. So this is what the nitrogen cycle looks like on paper, or in this case, screen. And yes, it can be a bit scary, but we're gonna fully break it down into the details this entire video. The whole point of the nitrogen cycle is to process toxic ammonia and nitrite into the less toxic form nitrate. Now I also want to discuss where the nitrogen cycle actually happens. Most people, especially in this hobby, associate the nitrogen cycle with bacteria in an aquatic environment, but it's actually a lot bigger than that. The nitrogen cycle happens everywhere. If an animal dies in the woods, the process of its body breaking down contributes to the nitrogen cycle, or even a field of cows. All that manure has to go somewhere. It also contributes to the nitrogen cycle. I'll get more into this in a minute, but that's why that cycle can happen in our tanks. If we throw some fish food in the tank we want to cycle, the reason that we don't have to add any additional nitrifying bacteria along with it is because they live on everywhere and everything, which makes the process a lot more simple. Some hobbyists like to add a bacterial supplement along with it because it can speed up the process, but that's not entirely necessary. Speaking of bacteria living everywhere, once the bacteria is in your tank, they should just be okay floating around in an empty space, right? Well, not quite. You can cycle a completely empty tank, but it may not be in your best interest. In order for your tank to fully cycle, you need a lot of bacteria, and that means a lot of surface area too. Well, a tank by itself doesn't offer a lot of surface area, does it? That's why adding in some rock or substrate to your tank and some bio blocks into your sump will be a much better option than just trying to cycle a bare tank. Another common question a lot of people ask is, you know, how long is this gonna take? I have an event soon and I want this tank to be running ASAP. And that's a valid question. In total, this process should take roughly six weeks, but that is a very gray area since factors such as whether bacterial supplements were added, the water temperature and salinity come into play, and it can actually affect how your tank cycles. Six weeks just happens to be the general time frame for most tanks. All right, so to start off this cycle and actually get the bacteria needed into the tank, we need to introduce some waste products first. When I first started this tank, I honestly thought that the cycling process just happened on its own. Don't make fun of me. You're not allowed to make fun of me. <laughs> I know better now. That is what we in the business like to call wrong. <laughs> Here's two main ways you can introduce bacteria into your tank to start this process. And that is either one, buying cultures of beneficial bacteria from your local LFS, or two, you can just toss some fish food in there and let it break down and attract bacteria that way. We ended up going with the latter because it honestly was a lot simpler since we have to go around feeding all the fish in the building anyway. However, be warned, if you do choose to go this route, the water can get cloudy and maybe a bit smelly if you do it this way. So if that starts to happen, don't panic, it's fine. It's just the process happening. <laughs> One thing to remember though, is we want to feed a small, steady amount to the tank. The cycle involves different types of bacteria. The bacteria strain that converts ammonia to nitrite is not the same kind that turns nitrite to nitrate. What complicates things is that the byproducts of certain bacteria are toxic to other types that are needed later in the cycle. So getting back to what I was saying, don't put a bunch of waste into your tank all at once and hope for the best. We want to see ammonia levels drop, but if nitrite levels spike off the charts, that's not necessarily a great sign either. So we want to take it slow. So the bacteria that oxidizes nitrite to nitrate has a chance to colonize. That way the cycle doesn't reset, which we really don't want in this case. So that is the general overview. Let's talk in a little more depth of the individual stages of the cycle. 
The first stage involves processing ammonia into nitrite. Once food or waste gets into the tank and breaks down, it releases hydrogen nitride, or ammonia, for all of us common folk. Now, ammonia is incredibly toxic to fish and corals. Ammonia can't be allowed to persist in our aquarium, so we need bacteria present to get rid of it. Or else you can say bye-bye to all those organisms you actually want to keep alive and you probably paid good money for. So now, what exactly is this bacteria that I'm talking about? The bacteria that grows in the water when ammonia is present is called nitrosomonas. These little dudes take that ammonia and oxidize it during a process called nitrification and turn it into nitrite. If you're keeping track of your tank's ammonia and nitrite levels during this process, as you should, you'll notice when this happens. Once those nitrosomonas bacteria start to reproduce after taking in ammonia, the levels of ammonia in the tank will stop climbing suddenly and begin to fall. At the same time, your nitrite levels will begin to rise. This whole process will take around 10 to 15 days, give or take. Now let's move on to the nitrite to nitrate part of this conversation, because I know you're all completely on the edge of your seats right now. <laughs> all right, so after the oxidation of ammonia, you're left with nitrite, right? Well, newsflash, it's also poisonous to fish and coral. So what happens now? Well, luckily there's two types of bacteria in the nitrogen cycle process in saltwater aquariums. We already talked about nitrosomonas bacteria, but the bacteria that help in the oxidation of nitrite are nitrospira. If you have done a little bit of research into this process, you may be looking at me like, um, actually, Beck, you're wrong. It's nitrobacter bacteria, do your research. And yeah, you're right, those do break down nitrite into nitrate but only in really high ammonia systems, such as like a waste treatment plant or something like that. Not most saltwater tanks. Not that it matters, you're not taking your bacteria out on a date, so you aren't obligated to remember their names. Moving on to what actually matters though. These nitrospira bacteria come in because they live off of the waste produced by the nitrosomonas bacteria, which is the nitrite. And the same thing ends up happening with what happened with the ammonia the nitrospira end up turning nitrite into nitrate through that same process of oxidation. Again, if you're doing your homework and testing your tank every day or every other day, you'll notice when this happens, your nitrate levels will fall and level off and your nitrate levels will begin to climb. This part of the process is a little bit slower and takes around 25 to 30 days to complete. So finally, our nitrate levels have gone down and we now have a good amount of nitrate in the system along with the bacteria to keep this cycle going. However, high amounts of nitrate can still be bad for your system. It isn't super toxic, but depending on the kind of corals you want to put in your tank, you will want to try and keep nitrates at around five to 20 ppm or parts per million. Corals such as Acropora that appreciate low nitrates to achieve bright coloration should be kept at around 5 ppm. Corals that need a higher nutrient level, like most LPS, will benefit from lightly elevated nitrates and should be kept at around 10 to 20 ppm. Technically, we're now in a good spot, but I still want to take things a little slow when stocking the tank with fish and corals. I know that you really are excited to put all of these beautiful corals and beautiful fish into your tank, but it doesn't do you much good if they all die. Once my tank gets to that point where ammonia and nitrite levels are basically zero and the nitrate levels are steady, I plan to introduce some herbivorous fish, but hold off on coral additions for a little while longer. Bear with me, the simple answer to this is algae loves nitrates. And now that nitrates have entered the chat, I'm expecting an algae bloom and don't want my corals covered in gross green stuff. <laughs> Adding in some herbivores to do some landscaping before the corals arrive will help out quite a bit. So good fish for this job would be tangs, box faces, blennies, inverts such as snails, and some emerald crabs are also good for the job. Once I'm confident that the algae isn't going to explode, then I can start adding in the corals. All right, so now that we have covered the nitrogen cycle itself, let's use that information to solve some of the most common problems that we see in our tanks. If I missed something that you may or may not wanna know, Feel free to ask in the comments below. We try to answer a lot of our comments. And if anything, we have a large community of experienced reefers who may want to lend a hand as well. So starting off, our first two issues kind of go together. Your first issue that may arise is your nutrients being too high. 
your nutrients, aka your nitrates, being too high can cause some algae blooms of some very undesirable algae. Remember when I mentioned not to add corals to a tank right away because algae loves nitrates? Yeah, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> the reason that algae blooms commonly happen during the cycling process is because not only are there lots of nutrients coming into your tank, but there isn't really a set structure to it all either. Kind of like how you would picture the Wild West per se. Endless opportunity and no one to stop you. Well, the algae is the pioneer in this analogy. That algae is going to take over all the space that it can until something slows it down or stops it. However, even after you wait for things to settle down in the algae department before adding your corals to your tank, algae blooms can happen at any time. So if you find yourself experiencing algae in the hair or film variety, try and do a water change and see what happens because more often than not, it's just because your tank's nitrate levels are too high. And when in doubt, some good old fashioned elbow grease never hurt anyone. Well, actually it probably has hurt somebody, but for the sake of this video, we're just gonna move past that. All right, now on the flip side of things, bad organisms can also come from your nutrients being too low. Dinoflagellates are one example of organisms that can thrive in low nutrient conditions. Dinoflagellates look like this weird mucus substance that coats everything and is really gross looking. And it can be pretty harmful to your tank as well if you let it get out of control. Another organism that thrives in low nutrient conditions is cyanobacteria. That's the pink stuff you may have seen growing on the rock in your tank. This isn't as harmful to your tank as dinoflagellates would be. However, it may annoy your corals if you let it get really out of hand. So how did the nutrients get too low in the first place? Well, you may have either been doing too many water changes, put too much macroalgae in your refugium and they ate up all the nutrients. Your chemical filtration like GFO is overstepping the water a little bit, or you just haven't been feeding enough and that food hasn't been there to break down and release more ammonia restarting the cycle. So now the nutrient levels have kind of died down. Those are the reasons why the low nutrient situation has been caused. Now, how do you fix the organism issue? <laughs> I look at it as a two-step solution. First is to fix the underlying chemical issue or the why it's happening. Second is to eliminate as much of the dinoflagellates and cyanobacteria as possible. Here we try to scrape and siphon away as much as we can. We also uh, recommend adding a UV sterilizer. They've done wonders for us here in keeping our tanks looking crystal clear. All right, moving on to the third most common problem. Uh, another problem that can arise when cycling is not being completely sure where in the cycle you are. The whole cycle process sounds so linear on paper, but in practice, there can be a few stops and stutters. For example, we unknowingly put a lot of coral in danger at one point because we didn't double check our cycle. The nitrate levels were pretty low in the tank, so we figured the cycle was fully complete and it was a good time to start adding corals to the tank. Well, what we didn't take into account was, what if the nitrates were low because they didn't have a chance to get high yet? Meaning the nitrate portion of the cycle was just starting. So with the addition of the corals, as well as the food we were feeding them, this kickstarted the ammonia levels. And since there wasn't enough bacteria in the system yet, the toxins really did a number on our corals. So what's the best way to avoid this? Just double check your cycle or triple check even. All right, so problem number four, trying to cycle with fish and corals. This was something that was kind of the norm back in the day, but we have since realized that this was really unnecessary and just put animals at risk. Believe me, you're better off just waiting to get your fish and coral until after the cycle is finished. They will be a lot healthier and happier that way. Remember at the start of this video, when I said this process takes six-ish weeks? And then remember when I said ammonia and nitrates are incredibly toxic to fish? Yeah, it's best not to put toxins into your fish for six weeks straight. A very tough fish can survive the cycle, but that cycle would progress with or without that fish being there. So it's better off to just not do it with the fish, period. That way your fish are, like I said before, healthier and happier. All right, so the fifth and final issue that I'm gonna cover in this video is the mindset of my tank is finally cycled. Now it will stay cycled until the end of time and I will never have to test it again until I see an issue. 
Make it a habit to regularly test your parameters to avoid any problems altogether and not just test to troubleshoot a problem you finally noticed. A lot of the time, most problems have done quite a bit of damage if you're not noticing them with the naked eye. If you work on making it a habit now, you'll, it'll become second nature to you down the road. All right, everyone, that's my video on the nitrogen cycle. I hope you learned a little something from it. I'll be back in my next video, giving you an update on how my tank is doing during its cycling process in the near future and different things that I'm doing to kind of help it along in that process. And then before I go, remember, test your parameters. Cycling a tank is just nitrification. Talk to your fish, don't drink the salt water, and as always, <laughs> happy reefing. See you guys. Or else you can say bye-bye to all those or and then corals that need a higher nutrient level, like most LPS, will benefit from. Benefit will benefit from. And then corals that need a higher nutrient level, like most LPS, will benefit. Why? <laughs> benefit. That's not even a word. In your refugium. I dare anyone to say that really fast. It's not easy. <laughs> Put too much at mad. Did I just stroke? Put too much macroalgae in your refugium and they ate up all the. Ow! I said it right, but then I paused at the wrong time. Okay, we're gonna get it. I swear, to, I swear, we're gonna get it this time. Okay. The number one, which is nitrogen. That, that wasn't English. That Actually, that wasn't any language. What it. I'm fine. I'm good. We're doing great, actually. Uh, yeah.